Hey everybody, so for today's video, I kind of wanted to go over some different aspects of the video in case you were considering buying it. I know console releases any day now, and I know there's a lot of our Xbox, a lot of our PlayStation friends that are really wondering, hey, should I buy this? Should I spend 30 bucks on this? You know, maybe you play a different fishing simulator game and you're on the fence about this one. Well, I'm here to just give you some information, just kind of go over some of my favorite points, some of the things that maybe are a little frustrating, and so you can kind of get a better idea and judge for yourself if you think Call of the Wild the Angler is for you. And I think the first thing for me, whenever I'm looking at this, it's it's easily the graphics. <laughs> like, I've played a, a more than a handful of fishing simulator games, and it's just, you don't get graphics like this. If you played the Hunter Call of the Wild, you know how good those graphics are. Well, guess what? The Angler is on an even a more updated engine, a new engine. Graphics are even better. Just absolutely stunning. I mean, we can go to some different uh, vistas here. Let's, oh, we can't fast travel to that one, but there is a good one we can go to over here, I believe. Go over here there's some really great <laughs> views like holy cow look at this i'm gonna turn go into your settings here you can turn this off you can turn all these activity reports off and save that and so you guys can see this i mean look at this if you just want to enjoy the view holy cow isn't this just spectacular and it just, I mean, look at the detail. If you look down over there, you can see all these little bodies of water. Those little lakes that you're looking at there, you can go fish at all of those lakes. Any little body of water you see, you can run up and you can go fish at, and there is procedurally generated, generated I don't know about procedurally, but generate, you know, generated fish in there that are all unique to the elevation, the temperature, the depth of the water. You know, it all all plays into what fish are generated in those waters, and it's it's so cool. It is so cool. That's really just what stands out. First off, now I, I'm I'm not gonna say the graphics are absolutely perfect and and everything looks great and it's all wonderful. There are spots on the map. There are places in the water where I you know I'm, I hope they're going to touch up. There's like little little just tiny blips you know like around especially around like waterfalls or where different like waterways enter like where you know a river enters the lake it kind of looks a little weird um where the waterfalls kind of meet the the lakes and the rivers down here it, it can look a little bit weird you know it just with time you know that's going to get patched up but right off the bat by and large the graphics are amazing and it's just not something you get with other fishing simulator games like like you do with Call of the Wild Angler. It's it's so cool. It really is amazing. Now, another aspect of this game is the multiplayer. It's pretty much all multiplayer. It's a game that's meant to be played online with friends. Um, they have dedicated servers. You know, Expansive Worlds, the studio. So you're not on your own map you're not you know maps aren't being hosted by you know the you know by the individual they're being hosted by the studio so it's not like somebody's fishing you know your population of fish every time you go into a server brand new fish population is spawned so you're you're not fishing out you know your own population you're not fishing out somebody else's nobody can affect your fish on a server except for you so if I'm fishing, let's just, you know, fast travel over here. Let's just say I'm going over here. I'm fishing over here. Nice little lumber mill area. I'm fishing right here. I've got my bobber out, you know, and somebody takes a Jeep and just drives through me into the water. They're not gonna spook my fish. My fish are gonna be totally unaffected by what other people do, right? I'm the only one that can spook my fish, which is awesome, which is so cool because that means you can have your, all of your friends come hang out. There can be up to 12 people on a server, like in a lobby, I guess you could call it. And it, it's just 
so fun. You know, somebody catches a diamond, you get like a little notification on the side of the screen saying, you know, so-and-so caught a diamond fish. And then everybody looks to see where they are, you know, and they brush over there to see if they can get, <laughs> if they've got a diamond fish over there in their population. And it's just really cool to be able to fish with your friends without, you know, maybe, maybe you've got, you know, we all have an obnoxious friend. I'm not gonna say CJO and Scarecrow are my obnoxious friends, but I'm not not saying it. And if they could spook my fish, I know a million percent they would. So I'm so glad that they can't. But it is really fun to play uh, on this, you know, on these dedicated servers with your friends. It, it it really changes the game to see people in here. You know, it is open world. I mean, look how big this map is. You've got different environments. You have like a low elevation desert environment here. You've got high elevation mountain rivers. There's trout. We've got our friends here. You know, there's trout, there's kokanee salmon. Then you've got some lower elevation, you know, warmer waters here with, you know, tiger muskie, small mouth, large mouth. You know, you've got pike, you've got crappie, you've got sunfish, just all kinds of different stuff. And then you've got you know, the rivers that have sturgeon, they've got walleye, you know, all kinds of really cool areas and different, you know, elevations, different areas of the map have different kinds of fish. And there is a lot of like overlap, you know, but it's really cool how you can go to different places. Like you saw where we were at before and then we can go down here and then we can be in like a low, like a lower elevation desert, right? It's super cool. I love it. Absolutely love the open world aspect. The fact that you can just be like, hmm, I haven't fished this little teeny tiny dot of a lake. I'm going to hop in a Jeep, which are free. You don't have to spend any credits on them or anything. And just go four wheeling up to that little lake and fish there. It's super fun. I absolutely love that about this game. And there's not a lot of fishing games that do that. I, I can't even think of any off the top of my head that have such an open world aspect to it. Um, it's, it's really great. And now the, as far as the fish animations go for me, somebody who in my simulation games, I like it to be realistic, but I don't, I don't want it to be the exact simulation that I get fishing. Right. So, some there are some people who aren't, who get a little nitpicky as far as the fish animations go. And there's certainly room to improve. And I'm sure that the developers will do that but they look great to me they're fine to me they're definitely not anything that i worry about at all um, it's not something that i ever think of it doesn't ruin it for me um, if you're somebody who really really likes hardcore simulation games you know there are certain aspects of this game that you may not like if you really like call the hunter call of the wild you're going to like the angler it is the same pace the same style of game just angler and I, I really enjoy it. You know, some people are like, well, you know, if I throw, you know, if I'm catching a fish every cast, that's not realistic. That's not a simulation. And that's true. You know, like uh, that is true. You don't catch a fish every time you cast out in real life, but you also can do things to make the game harder for yourself, right? So if you don't want to catch a fish every cast, you don't necessarily do that anyway. But if you're throwing out really small hook sizes or small lures, you're more likely to get a fish just because you're casting into an area with a lure that's going to attract a larger amount of fish. You're going to attract the smaller fish, the medium size, and the big ones. Now, if you really want to challenge yourself, fish in areas with only the larger like lures, the larger baits, and that sort of thing to only hook the bigger fish because there's a lot less you know, diamond and gold size fish in the game. So that's one way that people kind of, you don't really think like, oh, you know, I'm getting too many fish. Okay, yeah, you're getting a fish every cast or every other cast, and, but you're getting teeny tiny little fish you just throw back anyway. You're not getting trophy fish every cast. It is actually incredibly difficult to get trophy fish. If you play the Hunter Call of the Wild, you'll notice that diamonds and the angler are way, way more rare than diamonds in the Hunter Call of the Wild. I can play for hours and not get a diamond fish on here. If I play for two hours, I can get a diamond off a of multiplayer in the Hunter Call of the Wild, lickety split. I mean, if you look, I, you see me in videos with Scarecrow, you know, doing the 60 minute trophy challenge, we're getting, you know, a gold level rare or diamond in 60 minutes every time we play without, 
I mean, I don't think we've ever done a challenge where we couldn't get a gold level rare or diamond in under 60 minutes multiplayer hopping. So that's something to consider too. Um, if you like the hardcore, hardcore simulators that want to make it the exact same as fishing in real life, you know, you can always test it out, you know, especially if you've got Steam or Xbox and see what the return policies are. Test it out. See if it's for you. Um, just see if you like it. But if you like the Hunter Call of the Wild and the pace of that game and the style of that simulation game, you are absolutely going to like Call of the Wild the end. I promise. Um, let's see. Some of the other things is the species. The species diversity on the map. You know, when it launched, they didn't have all these fish when it launched a year ago. I mean, almost a year ago to this date. But within a year, the team added a brand new reserve with a, in Norway with all new fish. Then they came back and they added additional fish to the base reserve. And they basically did a completely game-changing update a year into it. And that update, what came in that update were suggestions from the community. The developers, you know, Expansive Worlds, the studio, they took into account all the feedback that they're getting from their players. And they said, you know what? This is, you know, the majority of players would like to see these, you know, changes. It works well with the game. We think it plays well with the game. And they implemented those changes. They actually took the time to listen to the community and make those positive changes. And I know on release, the game really wasn't what everybody expected it to be. And that's okay. That's okay. I still enjoyed it. It was still a fun game. But what brought me back was the studio's commitment to continuing to develop the game and add more to it and make it better to listen to the community, listen to our wants, listen to what we were, what our suggestions were, and implement those when it made sense and when it's something that the community really, really called for. Um, it's just that's not something you get with a lot of companies. A lot of companies, their teams will say, this is the game we wanted to make, this is the game we made, and if you don't like it, that's okay. We're gonna keep making it the way we wanna make it. I, I love that EW listens to the players. You know, they can't do everything. They can't do everything the player wants. You know, they have to take everything into account, but the stuff that makes sense, the stuff that is possible to do, the stuff that they really understand that the, this is a big, wide community want or need, they're all about it, all about it. Now, I would, I would be, I'd be remiss to say there's some stuff that I really wanted to see right when the game launched, right? I really, really wanted to see lodges, like trophy lodges. You don't, we don't have those yet. Um, you know, on stream, you know, Jaxie said, you know, if you don't know who Jaxie Beard is, he's the, one of the community managers for Expansive Worlds, and he does a weekly stream on Wednesdays. Um, and he did say, you know, he can neither confirm nor deny that a trophy lodge is, in, you know, at least in talks. Like, you know, they're they're talking about implementing the trophy lodge. Um, that's something that I'd really like to see, and I think would bring a lot to this game. Um, I'd also. I mean, because really the only thing you we have right now to see the fish that you've caught is you can see your personal best fish on the reserve, right? So my diamond bass, my diamond golden trout. And I've got plenty of diamond golden trout before, but I can only see my best one. I don't get to see, I don't have a way other than screenshots to see all the awesome fish that I've caught, you know, just the best ones that I've caught. Um, and that's that's fine. I just I think it would be really great to have a place to kind of show off everything that you've had that you've gotten, a place to keep those memories and a way to kind of just like you know, this like hey, this is all the hard work. Showcase the hard work that you've put into it. It kind of makes me I don't know, for me it gives me something else to like, you know, strive for, keep pers you know, pushing for, you know, more trophies, you know, you know, wanting to fill out a lodge, you know, that's, that's how it works for me in the Hunter Call of the Wild. I don't know if that's how it works out for the community, you know, we'll see. Um, but that's, that's something that I really love. Now, the other thing that I love is their, their detail on these fish and the information that they have here. They, they give you the habitats, where the fish like to, like to live and hang out. They give you their bait and lure preferences. You know, you can go to inspect. 
and gives you all this information. Hey, this is what they like to bite on, and this is in you know a you know descending order. So they most like red worms, cheese, eggs, you know, liver, spoon, all the way down, right? So it's it's really cool the way they do that. Now I will say there are species like if you look here, we're gonna go back here. We're gonna click tab. Nope, we're not gonna click tab. We're gonna click F for the traits. So it gives you the traits of each fish bottom marker you know go tells you it's going to be at the bottom hard fire jumper night out more active at night so you know, this is a fish that you want to go for at night the the biggest i think it's not an issue because they've they've fine-tuned it and they listen to the community on this is the fish that are active at night and at day you can still catch them both you know either day or night but you're going to catch more sturgeon at night it's going to be easier to catch them at night um, so if you're on a server that's like, you know, 6 a.m., you're not going to be able to change the time. You just have to wait for it to be nighttime if you really want to target a certain species. Or you could try to get into other servers by going to main menu, waiting a few minutes, and then, you know, trying to join another multiplayer server, and you can get into one at night. Um, there's no way to change the time in-game. Uh, even if you go offline, you just start at noon, and you just, you're sitting there, you know, you have to wait till nighttime to, you know, start fishing at night or vice versa. If you get into a nighttime server and you want to fish for something that really only bites during the day, you do have to wait. Um, and that's something, I don't know if they're going to be able to fix that. They've got these live dedicated servers. You know, the game is meant to be played online, played with friends. I don't know if that's ever going to change, if they're going to implement, you know, a system where we can see a list of servers possibly, you know, servers that are in the daytime, servers that are in the nighttime and be able to choose from those. I don't know if that's coming. That would be nice. Uh, but that's potentially one thing that could be a little frustrating for folks. Um, I know another thing that I see a lot in, in comments is they just wish some of the animations were more realistic. Again, that's not something that I super notice or something that I take, uh, you know, put a lot of stock into. Um, I know a lot of people who who want that are are very, very avid fishermen in real life. And so they're like, oh, I've caught, you know, largemouth bass before. They don't move like that whenever I catch them. That's fair criticism, I think. Um, you know, for me, it's a game, you know, it can only simulate real life to a point. Um, and it's not something that's really a deal breaker for me. If you guys want to see some of those animations, I've got plenty of videos on the channel. Um plenty of things for you to see different gameplay see how it plays you're going to see positive you're going to see negative um this is just a this video is really just a basic informational video to give you you know my overview you know i've got you know well you know well over hundreds and hundreds of hours in this game what i think what i think about it what i like about it what i don't like about it but most importantly i think if you're really, really on the fence deciding if you want to get this game, if you like simulation games, if you like fishing games, if you played the Hunter Call of the Wild and you like that style of game, you like the pacing, you're absolutely going to love the Angler. It just, it's only getting better. They're, they're bringing this to console. Console's dropping any day now. It's going to be cross-platform. You're going to be able, everybody on Xbox, going to be people, play with people on PC and PlayStation. We're all going to be playing together. Um, it, it's going to be a community oriented game. And, and I absolutely love that. You don't have, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to make that about your play, but it, you have that option. And I don't know of another fishing simulator game like this that you really have the option to be so community oriented and that's just something i think is super awesome and i love that about this game um but if you have any more questions if if there's anything else that you would like to know before you know you you uh take the dive and, and purchase the game let me know in the comments and i'll get back to it as soon as i as soon as i can i try to you know answer comments you know every day every other day i usually get back to people within 24 to 48 hours if they have any questions Go ahead, put it in the comments, and um, I'll see what I can do. And, and anyway, I hope you guys decide to join us on this game because I love it. I love fishing with everybody. I've got tons of people who watch my streams that come and join and come fish with us, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.